every time when people ask me why did I choose China, I always answer why not. My name is Elias Dehistani and I'm an Afghan student currently studying in Jiangxi University of Finance and Economics. Well, the reason I chose China, actually it's quite a story. Uh, I just finished high school back home and I was kind of preparing to get into university and all that but at the same time I didn't want to stay at home and I want to study abroad. I always had this kind of you know, dream to go abroad, study all that. At the time at least I didn't know anything about the Chinese language. For me because of the movies and all that I just thought they had a lot of letters. I didn't even know that they don't use letters, they have the characters Hansa, right? At one point me and my friend, he actually came with me to China too. Uh, we had this talk about like, okay, what do we want to be in the future, you know? What kind of career path are we going to go into? And that was, we were like, okay, we want to be economists. We want to study economy, we want to study international trade. And at the time, because of the, you know, the development of uh, China, the economy development is really good, the culture is good, the history, everything is fine. It's just a language barrier, right? The language is the problem. We did a bit of research about the language, obviously hard, but like, we were like, it's doable. So. We started like at the last moment basically because I got the CSE scholarship like I had to finish all my documents and everything in like within a week so in one week I got passport I got like my you know diploma all that stuff settled and then applied for visa and then came to China well my decision to come and study in China was kind of like my parents decision because my sister was here before me so they wanted us to be together while we're like studying. So for them, like it was like um, a good thing that I will be like with my sister in the same country, even if we're not in the same city. It is actually a good thing. I also wanted that. I also wanted to like have like some part of my family where I'm going to continue my studies. My name is Iman, but everyone calls me Uni. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> uh, I'm from Morocco. I study tourism and urban management here in Jinshi University of Finance and Economics. I'm doing my bachelor's degree and this is my second year now. Uh, the first time I arrived in Jufi, I remember it very vividly. It was 9.30 p.m. I just, the plane just landed in Nanchang Airport. My friend came to pick me up. We came all the way to university. It was really close actually, quite close from airport to university. When you're tired, the only thing you think about is like, okay, where am I gonna sleep? When we got, uh, we stopped in front of the dormitory. I was like, okay, that's a good start because the dormitory is like huge, it's beautiful. And I didn't know that I will have a single room actually. We had a volunteer here and he helped with the room. I went like, like 10.30. I wasn't expecting to be honest to anyone to be here because it's like past their work time, right? But the volunteer was here. He helped me settle in my room and I remember the, it was around 11.30, I went to bed. And after now five years, now this is home. I came to Jufi because it was one of like my, the universities that I wanted to check. And when I came, I was so like amazed by like the campus because it was so peaceful. It looked like somewhere you really wanna like study and focus on your life, on your professional career. I fell in love with the campus before I got to like meet the office or anyone else. Good morning. It's, it's 6.52 in the morning. And it's really early these days because of, you know, there's a lot of stuff I have to take care of. There's a lot of stuff I have to do. So I kind of wake up quite early. Since I'm a master's degree student, it's my second year, I don't really have that much classes. I wake up uh, in the morning, you know, get some coffee. Uh, gym here opens around 9, 10. So first thing I do is like, I'm gonna, you know, start the day right, go to gym. I like to hit gym uh, in the morning, just to start the day right. And it doesn't matter how busy I'm gonna get uh, during the day. Sometimes it's just like, just to get my mind in the right place, get my body in the right place and that's the best thing for me to do and the best time for me to do it is in the morning so now i'm gonna have my coffee and get ready for gym
This is my second year. I have a lot of classes in the morning. <laughs> like my schedule is so busy. So I always wake up in the morning and I go to the canteen next to the building where I have classes. Usually it's the canteen or like if my friends are not do not want to eat like breakfast there we just go to a, a little bakery in front of the my building and it has like really cute stuff there so yeah uh, the online shopping here in China is really convenient it's really easy you just have to have the apps on your phone or sometimes not even the apps you just have like Alipay in your phone and you can go through other applications uh, with that so in Taobao you can find anything, I mean literally anything you need, you want, you can find it there. And then there's also DD, like it's the, uh, like Uber, the taxi app. Uh, with one click of the phone you can order whatever you want, like let's say books, anything, any kind of accessory you need. Like you can go to Taobao, Jidong, you can find it in a really cheap price as well. And then there's like the food delivery thing. You know, there's have so many different apps for it. It's amazing how they do it. Usually I use Erlama or Meituan to order food. Uh, today I'm gonna just use Erlama. Wait. I'm gonna go downstairs to pick it up. They just bring it uh, in front of our building. Everything in China here has been digitalized. So anything you can just travel around China with your phone okay good I'm glad to hear that all right so today we will now cover two parts the first part is a brief introduction about Chinese healthcare system all right and the second part is traditional Chinese medicine okay and from some uh, from some statistics from some numbers we can tell you know, with the better uh, medical system, now people's life span is getting, you know, longer. As a tourism student, I would say that our courses are like pretty good. The content is like really interesting. Our teachers are really competent. Like they have good English. They're super helpful and my studies like I, I like the quality of the courses here okay will you share with each other and compare see any difference or you know similarities between the chinese healthcare system with your home you know uh, home country and other your classmates from different countries ah i see um, when we first came we had like we had classes in a different building but this year like we moved to a better building like with a like it's a better facility if you want we have screens all over the classroom but uh, if it's called Sanjia, tier 3 and Jia Yi Bing Jia is the best class Sanjia okay then that is a very good one. All right. And this is the local healthcare institutions. In addition to hospital, we have a, a community health center, township clinics, and the village clinics. All right. Very convenient. Most of the master students we have, the ones that do English, they haven't been in China beforehand. So they just got here basically and like they're trying like the professors are helping them with like even the ordering food, buying stuff online, everything like the teachers are really helpful. As we know when we study, you know, uh, geography of China, we know there are 56 ethnic groups in China, right? Can you name some of the big ones? From some teas, some like they, they collect from the Forest? Forest, yeah. from the forest, yeah. grass. Yeah. I do have fun in class, yeah, because we have a pretty good relationship with our teachers. My mother used to tell me that 
My mother used to tell me that if you have white spots on your nail, that means you're lacking calcium. <laughs> <laughs> to make me drink milk, but I don't know if it's true. Okay. <laughs> There's like, we have a friend in Xi'an. The sunset is at 6 or like 7 p.m. Here in Nanshan it's like 4 or 5 p.m. Oh, wow. Even in summer, it's like... Wow. <laughs> yeah, because wow. Uh, you know we are uh, at a different uh, um, latitude. Okay, so and uh, uh, Xi'an is to the west. This pie da, go to It's really easy to get uh, contact with your supervisor or do your academic research here, I'd say. So, for me, I'm writing my master's dissertation right now, so for me it's really important to get uh, as much uh, kind of, as much access I can to different resources. And with Jufi here, we have really good uh, platforms to do so. I was really surprised when I got to our library. We have uh, books in mostly, most of the foreign books, so we have it in uh, English, we have it in Japanese, we even have it in Spanish actually. This is Russian. Russian? These are all books are Russian. I like about here we have a really nice coffee shop inside the library just because I'm here for coffee that's why I got like the couch so I can just relax a bit let's want to go to the other side all right let's go get some coffee same time we have really good relationship with the uh, dean with our professors and in my case my supervisor is really friendly he is really cooperative so anything I need I just go to his office and he gets it done one of the things that I like about Zufi is um, they try to introduce the Chinese culture to us in the most interesting way and they're also open to knowing about our culture and at the same time, they want us to see like how beautiful the Chinese culture is because it is beautiful, but we don't get to see that uh, if we look for it, you know? To give you an example, Jufi holds the International Cultural Festival every year to, for like different countries, they prepare a booth of theirs and they show like their food there, their cultural clothes, there are even performances like with like local dances or like anything that's special about the country where you're from. That shows how like Jufi in general, not just the overseas education school, are really like interested and attracted to the foreign culture. This is really good because this shows that the university is not only interested in our grades, 
They also want to help us improve our social lives. We also want to get to know each other, like the foreign community and also the Chinese community. We would like to be like one big family. We actually call like each other the Jufi family because that's how close we are thanks to the activities and the programs that Jufi gives us. Um, I think that Jufi does choose the right activities for its students because first of all we have like um, a Chinese volunteer team and a foreign volunteer team that decides what the activity will be in everything. Uh, of course, in the, under the supervision of the office. Hi. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. And they always end up with the right choices, the good choices, because we have activities on campus here that we can do. And we also have trips organized by the Overseas Education School uh, maybe around Nanchang or sometimes even outside to see the, the other cities in the province. So yeah, we have a lot of choices. The thing is, Afghanistan and China, that we're neighbors, and we have a long history. So there's like not that big of cultural shock for me when I got here. There was specific things that kind of made me like, oh, okay, that's how they do it. Because for us, like the food that they eat as well, right? We have the same, like they have here dumplings. We do have dumplings too, but the way we do it is different. The way we cook it is different. But there were some you know, there were some similarities that I saw in the culture, like, you know, respecting your family, and we are the same. Everything goes around, like, inside a family. Everything for us, the core of the society is the family. So, when I first came to China, I've noticed that the Chinese society, like the, the Chinese community, it's like if they all live in like one big house. It's like your grandpa's house. And what I mean by that is they're all like so free and so happy with each other and everyone is like having fun. It's like, you know, like it's the good times that you always live whenever you go visit your grandpa or your grandma. China can like is and can be very different from our own culture. That is true because, because it has to be like, every country has their own culture and their own way of living like and doing stuff. So if there was no like cultural difference, then why did I move like across the world, you know? There are like cultural differences between Morocco and China, of course. And the way I deal with it is I respect both cultures. I like I respect my own culture and I also respect the Chinese culture because I'm here in China. Being open-minded is one thing <laughs> that helped me and also wanting to try new stuff because one of the reasons why I chose to come to China is because I wanted to try a different culture. Now this is a beef. <coughs> you like it? I wish you guys happy Christmas. Yes. Hello, Victor. Hi. Hello. 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 Any news about the scholarship? Uh, we're still working on it. Once it's ready, we'll let you know. All right, thank you. And where's our chill section? Ah, it's in the office. All right, thank you. Okay. Hello, you love, sir. Yeah. How are you? Busy Bye. day, huh? Hi, uh -huh. right, good luck. The school organizes a lot of seminars, a lot of uh, lectures uh, here in the campus that Chinese and foreign students uh, can go there. Mostly, 
it's in Chinese, but we also have uh, some of the lectures, some of the seminars, which is in English. We have guest speakers from around the world who come here and they de deliver a speech or deliver a lecture. I remember a couple of years ago we had TED Talk here. It's actually in a few days uh, we have a seminar about One Belt, One Road that I'm trying to get my supervisor uh, to get me a seat there. Hopefully he can. Hey, Hello. Busy, huh? Yes. I need a favor. What's happening? There's a seminar in our school on 18th of this month. Okay. And I really have to get a seat there. But my department said there is no seat available. So I was hoping if you can help me get one. Uh, who's your class supervisor? Uh, my supervisor is uh, Mr. Li Xinwu. Li Xinwu, yes. yes. Okay, so let me try to call him, okay? Mm -hmm. See if we can solve the problem, okay? Thank you. Hello? Is that School of In uh, International Trade and Economics? Yes, I'm actually looking for uh, Li Xinwu. <laughs> Hey, Li 老师, 你好 我们有一个18号有一个那个seminar 然后我们这个同学 Elias that sounds good news. Yeah, it's okay now. It's oh, it's okay. Now. Yeah, I got a seat. Yeah, he huh? said the last two seats. Oh, all right. Well, I have the last one. All yeah. right, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Enjoy. Enjoy. Ah, bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. bye bye, everybody. The amount of. All company also, you see, uh, we have one academic of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. This is the top title of the company. The Zambia Congo. Also, the Germany, Russia, and uh, we also bring the Chinese supplier to go out. More than 200 domestic suppliers with between the two countries. Like the mine, like the factory, like the road, like the engineering, procurement, and the construction together. We can call it EPC. And maybe you can tell us uh, capital investment. How much capital investment can be enough for similarity? So after that, then you can, you can evaluate, we can help you to which technology you require. The school selects the excellent students for each year and today we're actually going to the ceremony of the best students who will get awards and I'm one of them. And it's actually quite interesting because some Chinese students will be doing some performances and also some international students I think. You all will see me getting a prize <laughs> for being one of the best students this year. And actually that means a lot since last year was the COVID-19. During lockdown it was really hard for us all to study because it was online and it was all new to us. Being one of the best students this year really means a lot to me. Like. I chose the best year to be one of them. Taiwan大学2019至2020学年学生先进颁奖典礼的现场，我是主持人黄一金。我是主持人佘玉恒。首先，请允许我为大家介绍出席本次礼。本次活动的领导，他们是校党委书记卢福才教授。Uh, today we had the excellent student ceremony and I think it was a blast. I had a fun time. Uh, I loved the violin players. I think they were really good. And then me and my other classmates, we got on stage, we received the award. It felt good. As you just saw, we just got the awards and it was such a rush. <laughs> I'm really proud and happy because like all of us there going on that stage and receiving it, 
it felt nice. It's a good thing. I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, the overseas education school uh, actually have really good uh, activities that they organize like Chinese corner and English corner which basically they bring foreign and Chinese students of Jufi together and we always have a topic we just talk about the cultural differences how to adjust how to adapt to the new culture and they give you tips Oh, you yeah, yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, getting ready for uh, the whole competition thing, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit. Special. How are you feeling? A little bit nervous, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Ready, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Recite the poem. Yeah. Man, make us proud, yeah. Good luck, man. 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 3 time like uh, mainly the weekends um, the first thing that I do or like the main thing that I do is call my family I like to check up on them like tell them about my my week how it like if anything happened and I also like to know like what's new with them and everything I also like to call my sister we talk for hours <laughs> so I try not to call her every day <laughs> um what I also do is, I like to watch my series. I, I really like watching series, so if I'm lazy, I'll just like sit the whole day in my room and just keep watching series. I'll even order online, no cooking, no nothing. Um, but if I'm feeling like, if I have like a little energy, <laughs> I go out with my friends, we check out new restaurants, we go to malls, we maybe go to the cinemas. Personally, I've never been a good time manager, <laughs> but being here in Jufi has taught me to ha has taught me how to better manage my time. That will be a good thing for my personal and professional life in the future. After after all these years I spent here in Jufi in Nanchang, you know, after all these things that I experienced, the friendships I made. It's gonna be really hard to say goodbye.